20 years ago, the idea of building an offshore wind turbine that floats out at sea was just that, an idea. Fast forward to 2017, and Equinor's High Wind Scotland becomes the world's first floating offshore wind farm. Since then, the pioneering project has become the UK's best performing offshore wind farm, three years running. High Wind Tampen in the Norwegian North Sea will continue the legacy with 88 megawatts of capacity, three times larger than Scotland. Equinor started floating many years ago. We are an industrial leader in floating wind. In 2022, we will have the third of the global capacity. Floating opens up new opportunities that bottom fixed offshore wind cannot. Bottom fix can normally not extend beyond 60 meters of uh, water depth, and most of the coastline around the world is deeper than that. Coincidentally, deeper waters come with consistently higher wind speeds, meaning more energy can be produced. But building floating turbines is more complex and requires greater investment, so commissioning larger projects is key to bringing down the cost. The economies of scale in floating offshore wind will be really, really important. You know, we've seen a very dramatic cost reduction in fixed bottom over the last 78 years, around about 75%. But we expect to see a far more spectacular cost reduction in floating wind. Indeed, imagining that it will be subsidy free by 2030. And the main drivers for that are larger turbines and the volume of deployment. From Hyvin Demo, which was the initial 2.3 megawatt turbine that Equinor had, uh, the capex per megawatt to Hyvin Scotland was a reduction of 70%. From Hyvin Scotland to Hyvin Tampen, the per megawatt capex reduction is expected to be 40%. And we do expect the bigger projects that are coming will uh, continue that uh, improvement curve. Working on the world's uh, biggest offshore wind project is uh, both inspiring and very challenging. It's a complex project with respect to economy, with respect to logistics, with respect to technology. But that said, our Tampen project will be a contribution to meeting the world net zero targets by being a stepping stone in the development of floating wind as a commercially available renewable energy source in the future. The projects we've developed so far, they have proven the technology, they prove this works, and UK has been very much the growth base for proving this technology. We want to go global, and we believe that floating is a solution for the world. Equinor's High Wind Scotland positioned the UK as a global leader in floating offshore wind. With the UK government setting a one gigawatt target for floating offshore wind by 2030, it can only be achieved if large-scale wind farms like High Wind Tampen are championed in UK waters.